For those of you who don't know me, I'm Ryan Cluckin, Oliver's best man. First of all, I'd like to say to Oliver, and I'd like to thank Oliver and Dee and their parents for hosting this amazing event. I'm honored to be here to celebrate with you. And I did tape Game of Thrones season premiere tomorrow night, and I hope you all did too. <laughs> I've had the unfortunate pleasure of knowing Oliver for about 15 years. We met all the way back in 2003 at Junior Statesman Summer School, or how, as I fondly remember it, political nerd camp. I was a quiet kid from California, and Oliver was the funny, outgoing kid from New Jersey who had huge curly hair and an even bigger personality. He also looked like he was 30 at age 16 with a full beard. We became fast friends. I remember how relieved I was when I found out he was going to be going to the same college, George Washington in DC. I was even more relieved to find out he would be living just around the corner on the same floor, but soon realized what that entailed. My room had an open door policy, and Oliver was definitely one to take advantage of that. He would come into our room, even when we were sleeping, and eat everything that we had. Goldfish crackers, chips, everything. He even drew a picture on our bathroom wall because he was bored. It was around this time I first remember getting a glimpse of Oliver's impressive dancing abilities. During late night dance parties in our dorm to music like Cascada, Bon Jovi, and Whitney Houston, I was constantly jealous of his cool moves. Back then, all you needed to do to get Oliver dancing was turn on a trashy pop song a 13-year-old girl would enjoy. <laughs> Dee, I'm not sure if that still rings true today. When I went back to his home in Livingston that Thanksgiving, in his bedroom, amongst the Power Rangers, Transformers, Tomorrow Never Dies poster, I noticed the gigantic bar mitzvah photo of him in the infamous John Travolta Saturday Night Fever pose. I realized that Oliver had been a dancer from a very young age. After our freshman year, Oliver and I were basically inseparable. We were also collectively known as Cluckbert to friends because we were always together and it was easier to just combine our names to ask if we were going somewhere. We lived together for our last three years of college. In that time, I watched Oliver grow as a person, but not literally, as he lost about 60 pounds <laughs> on a diet consisting of chicken, rice, and beans. I don't think that's changed. He also cut that long, beautiful, curly hair. We had a lot of great times in college and after college. We skied in Vermont, rode camels in Morocco, ziplined in Costa Rica, drank sangria legally in Spain, drank mojitos legally in the Dominican Republic, and even drank beer legally in Montreal. Meanwhile, Oliver's dancing reputation continued to grow. <laughs> Whether it be crowded fraternity house parties, country line dancing concerts, dark dance floors with bad techno music and strobe lights, Oliver never met a dance floor he didn't like. One thing about our friendship that we, is that we never missed an opportunity to goof on each other. One summer, I worked for my congressman on Capitol Hill and made the mistake of telling Oliver that one of my job responsibilities was giving free tours of the US Capitol and every so often fabricating a fact or two to hold people's interest. Somehow, the next week, Oliver was on one of my tours, posing as a constituent. <laughs> During the two-hour tour, he asked me absurdly hard questions straight from Wikipedia and challenged all of my alternative facts. <laughs> I really appreciated him that day. Post-college, Oliver and I knew we couldn't live apart, so we moved into our first grown-up apartment in DC. Our new mature adult lives consisted of eating a lot of salads, romantic comedies, and fancy Sunday meals. If it wasn't enough that we were living together at that time, we also started working together and were with each other 24 hours a day, basically. I referred Oliver to his first full-time job post-college at a large corporate firm in DC uh, that I was working for. The job for him was terrible. He will always credit me with helping him realize he didn't want to be a lawyer. Probably for the best. Sorry, Harvey. In 2011, we sadly parted ways. I went to law school in Chicago, and a few months later, Oliver ended up packing up his dancing shoes and moving to Asia, and ultimately ended up in Singapore. It was a few years later when Oliver mentioned that he had met a girl. He couldn't contain his excitement when he told me that most importantly, she was a professional dancer. 
In fact, they had met when he challenged her to a dance-off at a club in Singapore and lost miserably. <laughs> the first time I met Dee was when she and Oliver visited Chicago along with several other friends. It was during her whirlwind first trip to the U.S. I was instantly struck by her poise and kindness. She was funny, friendly, and personable. She was willing to put up with our dumb inside jokes and could hold her own. Most importantly, she could dance circles around Oliver. Over the last several years, I've had the pleasure of spending time with Dee and Oliver together in Kansas City, where Dee got her first true barbecue, Chicago, where he had, she had her first deep dish pizza, and New York, where she had her first proper Gilbert Thanksgiving. I have come to realize that Oliver the dancer has without question met the dance partner for life, his dance partner for life. I'd like to raise a glass to Oliver and Dee. Cheers to the both of you and Cheers. to a life of health and happiness. Um.